Wow. I don't even know where to begin, but just let me say this. Um, I have been in the healing ministry for over 25 years now. My background is I was a medical social worker, and then I went back to school, and I became an RN. I'm still a registered nurse. And then God had another plan, and God called me into the healing ministry. And as Marion has already so accurately stated, we have the Healing Center in Augusta. It was founded in 2000 when Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen came and dedicated our center and uh, prayed over us and commissioned us to the ministry that God had called us to. And to be able to carry forth that same type of ministry is an honor and a blessing. When Marion first contacted me and told me that she was building a healing center, I was ecstatic. About 14 or 15 years ago, the Lord gave me a vision of a healing center network where we would set up centers across the nation that we could work hand in hand to carry out the great commission that Jesus himself gave us. And you know that, go ye. And in fact, those of us that work in our healing ministry, and we have healing teams that go out into the community also. But we tell people all the time as we sending them out, I say, go ye, go heal the sick and raise the dead. And I can honestly say that in these years that I have been a part of this healing ministry, we have done that. We have seen people literally raised from the dead. We've seen body parts grow where there were no body parts. We've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears hear, lame legs walk. We've seen people healed of most any type of disease. I won't say every every disease, but every type of disease, including AIDS. We've seen people heal, diabetes, high blood pressure, and cancer. And in fact, we decree and declare over our center all the time, we are a cancer-killing center. And, uh, you know, the Bible says once you make a decree or a declaration, it's put into motion. It's established for you. And so when Marion contacted me and I thought, glory to God, I was so excited when I came in this morning and pastor, you started out, this is the day the Lord has made. Every morning in our healing center, we start out with, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> and so why? Because we know we've come to have an opportunity once again to share the word of God with those that are sick and suffering in pain, that hope has been taken away from them. But Jesus said he is our hope. And when we begin to minister and preach and teach the word of God, we are doing what Jesus called us to do. Some people call it the great commission that Jesus gave before he exited the earth. And you'll find that in Mark chapter 16, if you're not familiar with it. And he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They ta shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. I like that one. But then this is the essence of it. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so God had spoken. God gave what some people call a commission. I do not. I call it a command. When Jesus speaks directly to us and gives us a direct assignment, as he did here, that is more than a commission. A commission can be denied, as in the military. They can commission you. You have the right to decline the commission if you don't want it. But when God gives you a command, there is no option. If you call yourself born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and dwell by the precious Holy Spirit, and God speaks to you as he did to Marion to start this center, it is a command. When God says, go ye, and you go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you go. You would fill the command. When Jesus says, you lay hands upon the sick, and you shall see them recover, that's a command. You must us minister to the sick. And one of the things that I see today is so many churches deny the power of the gospel, the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're great 
well, let me rephrase that. Some of them are great <laughs> on bringing the message of salvation. Many churches today don't even teach salvation. I hope I'm not shocking you too bad, but it's the truth. But many deny the fullness of the gospel, which is to heal the sick. Jesus did three things. Jesus went about teaching, preaching, and healing. And I want you to know the teaching and the preaching preceded the healing. That's the essence of a healing center. We are to fulfill that commission. We are to teach the word of God. We are to preach the word of God. And we are to heal the sick. We must fulfill the command that has been given. And so like I said, when God gave me that vision several years ago of a network where we would link arms, so to speak, we would walk hand in hand, we would share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But by having centers in various parts of the country, in our center, we have had participants, and they are called participants for a reason. The Lord instructed me to call the people that come a participant. He said they will not be a client. A client is someone that comes expecting a service rendered. They will not be called a patient. You will not be administering medical care as I knew it in the medical field. He said they will be a participant because they have a part to play. God does his part, we do our part, and they do their part. And so he said we would have participants. But when they come in, we have an obligation and a responsibility to give them a foundation, the foundation of the word of God. Everything God has ever done, he's done it through the power and authority of his word. And God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Malachi 3, he said, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. So in this network, we're going to build it together. We're going to have a place, as I was about to say to you, we've had participants come from every state in the nation to our healing center in Augusta, as well as for 22 foreign nations. They come to us. Now, through technology, we're being able to expand even more so our international ministry. And we're doing Zoom meetings, and we have people from all over the world. And what are we doing? We're teaching the Word of God. If you do not teach them the Word of God, you cannot fulfill the great command. You can lay hands on them. You can minister to them. You can anoint them till oil just runs down their greasy little slick head. But when they walk out the door and the enemy hits them with a symptom, they can lose everything they just received if you have not given them the foundation of the word of God that says by the stripes of Jesus Christ you are healed. Where God himself said, I sent my what word and healed them and delivered them. I tell everybody y'all have to help me with my time, okay? So just throw something at me. Uh, but... Uh, well, glory, excuse me. This has been a day that the Lord has made. I'm bound, bent, and determined to rejoice and be glad in it. And let me tell you what. I know the plots and plans of the enemy. I know that the enemy would like to foil what is being done here today. I know he would like to break the anointing that's in this place today. There's a gathering of anointings in this place today. And I realized how much he hated what was being done when I arrived here today. And for the first time in 25 years of ministry, I showed up with no notes. And I worked hard on that message. <laughs> but I said, well, God, I guess you've got another plan. So I realized the enemy wanted to stop and block or hinder. But he can't stop the word of God. When you've got the word of God hidden in your heart and the pressure gets put on you, guess what? You're going to ooze word. And so I just wanted to share a couple of scriptures to remind you the significance of the word of God. In Isaiah 58, the word says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. I love that. But it's out of the Message Bible. It says, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. 
Your shadowed lies will be bathed in sunlight. I will always show you where to go. I'll give you a full life in the emptiness of places, including firm muscles and strong bones. That's a healing scripture. That is a healing scripture. And when I can begin to see that the light of God will begin to shine upon me, the light of God shall be shining upon you. We will now become co-laborers with each other, but more importantly, we will be co-laborers with Christ Jesus that we can bring others into the fullness of the word of God. God. Now, I could stand up here and preach healing all day long, and it's really a struggle not to, but I have something else that I want to move forward. This is sacred ground. I hope you realize today that you're standing on sacred ground. You're in the presence of God Almighty. There is a great command that has gone forth, and you have have a champion that has accepted the command. She has accepted the challenge. Will it have ups and downs? Will it have good times and bad times? Certainly it will. Will the enemy try to stop, block, and hinder the work? Of course he will. But because we are united in one heart, one purpose, and one accord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. If I can just add a note in there, we must not let division rip the church apart. We must walk in love. We must undergird. We must support, and we must serve together to carry out the will of the Lord in the earth, that we may be called co-laborers with him, that his glory may be seen and known in the darkness of the evil times in which we live. But God will use each of us if we will let, as the song I learned as a little girl, and perhaps you did too, let our light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But when I take my light and your light and your light, and your light, and we bring it together, we become very bright. And we're going to be bright for the kingdom of God. And we're going to lead people and direct people out of the darkness of sickness, disease, and the clutch of death. And we're going to bring in them into the liberty and freedom that Christ Jesus died to purchase for each and every one of us. Can I get one amen? <laughs> So now I come to my favorite time of today. I'm so excited. Whew. My precious darling daughter, if you will come. I said God gave me the vision. As many of you know, I'm from Whole Life Ministries in Augusta, Georgia, and Dr. Sandra Kennedy is my pastor. As she says, she taught me everything I know, and I'm here to represent her and Sandra Kennedy Ministries today. She sends her love. She sends her honor to you. And it is an honor today because we are going to commission my daughter in the Lord. We're going to commission her today as a director in the Healing Network. She has studied. Hallelujah. <laughs> She has studied to show herself approved. And because I want to make that I, sure that I do this correctly, I do have notes for this part, okay? Based on the scripture, 1 Peter 4, 11, whoever speaks to the people is to do so as one who speaks the oracles, the utterances, and the very words of God. That is an instruction to you. That is how you are to speak the word of God. The call to serve others and minister the word of God is not to be taken lightly. It is a very great privilege to be called and entrusted by God to be his representative and speak his word to his people. Recognize the high level of honor and responsibility the calling brings with it. 1 Peter eleven thirteen. 13, if you have a speaking gift, and you do, speak as though God were speaking his words through you. If you have the gift of serving, and you do, do it passionately with the strength God gives you so that in everything God alone will be glorified through 
Jesus Christ. For to him belong the power and the glory forever and ever throughout the ages. Release your faith. Depend on God to help you faithfully share his word as you should in each given situation and circumstance. Jesus declared, you are truly my disciple if you remain faithful to my teachings. 1 Corinthians six seventeen. But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. To you I say, Put your faith in the Holy Spirit to express himself and communicate clearly through you. Ask the Lord, put your words in my mouth and cover me in the shadow of your hand. Each time before you minister, use a faith activator, such as, Lord, thank you for giving me the exact scriptures, the testimonies and examples with the right emphasis for this person, this individual who needs to hear and to be blessed and to benefit. Trust the Lord to give you a fluency of speech that your words flow forth with clarity, simplicity, power, might, light, and understanding. Determine for your tongue to be that as the pen of a ready writer. To write on the tablets of the hearts of the people. For the Lord has said his word shall not return void, but shall accomplish that which it is sent to do. Remember, the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear. <laughs> or, intent, or timidity, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind to move in boldness regardless of the situations ahead. Always recall it is that the Lord must be glorified. That's the thing about ministry. It's not about us. It's all about him. Amen? Mary and be both challenged and encouraged in your ministry and service to the Lord and with his people. The Lord, the Lord has called, appointed, and anointed you for this time and season to be an instrument to expand the kingdom of God through the teaching of his word with signs, wonders, and miracles following that others may see and know him as Jehovah Rapha. Mm. My goodness, we're called on this great commission. And so this is my prayer of consecration for you today. The spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent you to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to, bl to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. So, Marion, today, it is with great privilege and great pleasure that I announce that you have fulfilled all requirements for membership in the Sandra Kennedy Ministries Healing Network, and you are now hereby commissioned oh, by the authority and auspices <laughs> of Dr. Sandra Kennedy and myself for membership in this network and in the services of Jesus Christ. We pledge to you our prayers, our encouragement, and our support as you serve and proclaim the healing message of Jesus Christ. Gracious Lord, we now present to Marion the certificate of commission. And Lord, we thank you and praise you that you have chosen her for such a time as this to teach your word, to be who you've called her to be, to go and do that which you commanded, and I say unto you, now go ye, heal the sick, raise the dead, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ.